what is the LES, and and what is the what is their objective? Look, it's a uh, it's a the, the membership uh, comes from ninety countries, and there are thirty seven. 37 odd, uh, I think it's 37 uh, local, uh, national and regional chapters. So your, your membership uh, is divided into chapters. And uh, the chapters are all over the world. Yes. Uh, so you have the, the, the American group and of course the, the USA Canada group, etc. and so forth. Now, uh, they, they, there's, a, they, there's a board what they call it, but it's, it's, they, they have a board and an international delegates uh, component, and that's the leadership. Uh, each and every chapter uh, automatically gets two international delegates. But depending on the size of your membership, you get uh, extra members, uh, extra delegates. So the Americans, for instance, have, I think, 21 delegates. And of course, China and Japan and uh, Germany, etc., and so forth. We have two, the smaller societies all have two, but once a year, the, the, the leadership comes together and then you talk strategy. Look, uh, there's a massive difference between leadership and management. Uh, we also have a management in LESI. Okay. Uh, they sit in Alexandria and they decide on the typical things where we buy the paper and you know what's the salary increase of the of the of the of the permanent people, but the the, the leadership discuss uh, strategic issues. You know, gazing into the crystal ball, into the future, and try and think where where law goes. Or just look, it's it's a as I mentioned to you, it's seventy percent business and thirty percent law. That's the difference between okay. uh, INTA and LESI. INTA is. 80% lawyers and 20% business art. And, uh, but, but LES is a lot of serious businessmen and, and you know, and okay, obviously lawyers and people from universities, etc. and so forth. Okay. And licensing executives, in, in, in what sense, what, what is the licensing part? What is the... It is a, look, it's a, it's a, it's a they call it the, the licensing executive society. But what it is, it is, a, it is an organization, first of all, it is very academic, it's a training organization, and they deal with the licensing of technology uh, and technology transfer. So it's, it's, it's the licensing in and out of technology, um, which of course explains the, the structure of the organization, because we have a lot of uh, uh, you can call it interest line or, or interest lines or academic lines. For instance, there's a very strong health component, health line. There's an automotive industry. There's a chemical industry. There's a high tech industry line. So what we do is when we have conferences, we organize our workshops that you have a stream of health uh, 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 lines, you know, health talks about various things in the health industry. And then you have uh, automotive, where those guys talk again about things that concerns them. So with high tech, and so and then of course uh, there's a there's a there's a, there are the the law side of it uh, because licensing per se has a very strong technical side, but it has a very strong legal side. So uh, there's a trademarks, uh, designs, and copyright committee, uh, and there are various other committees that are like, academical. And um, you obviously received a, 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 an accolade or a certificate of yeah. your involvement over the, how many years is it now? Uh, since 1990. 1990. Yeah, look, I, I started in, in LES South Africa. Uh, strangely enough, uh, a very patent orientated organization. So I started in 1990 and uh, I, yeah, obviously, if you if you if you represent the firm on these things, you need to be active. I mean, you can't just sit there and okay, fine, yeah, go once a year to some place. So uh, I became the, 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 the secretary of the organisation. Uh, started organising local conferences. Uh, we at, at stages ran three-day conferences. We also um, 
uh, had uh, workshops. We have uh, LESI provide you with academic workshops, uh, one day, two day, three day courses where we teach licensing. Uh, obviously, we also developed in South Africa, for instance, a, a beginner's course because, uh, as we know, you can have a number of firms that do IP law seriously, the rest sort of are commercial firms doing it. I mean, my background is commercial law. And um, so you need to teach the people the basics of intellectual property. You know, what is the trademark, what's the pattern, what's the design, etc. and so forth. So we had the beginner's course and then the more advanced things. So in Alias Eyes, I have a, a certified licensing professional qualification uh, where you, you write an exam set by, by USA Canada, for instance, uh, once or twice a year. And uh, when, if, you, if you're successful, you, become, you, you, you can have the, the acronym or the, the abbreviation CLP behind your name. Okay. So a person throughout the world can actually see that you completed a, a, quite a serious course mm -hmm. and you actually know something about licensing. Okay. But you know, so I, I was involved with the local chapter in uh, 2000 and 1995. We were asked to, uh, the LESI have two, well at that stage had two very serious conferences and your more important conferences. You have the international uh, meeting, LESI international conference where you have the delegates meeting and then a conference. And then we had what we call the uh, the expanded delegates meeting and usually the incoming president nominates a country where he wants to go to and have his meeting. In 95 the, the president elect was Jeremy Brown, ex-South African from Linklakers and he selected South Africa and uh, Alan Lewis uh, was, uh, he was an ex-partner here, yeah, a retired partner. Uh, the two of us organized or assisted him with the organization of that expanded delegates meeting in Cape Town. And then uh, we became ambitious and we, we put in a bid for the international conference, which was awarded to us, uh, small society. Were you inspired by the World Cup? <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, that was in 2001. Uh, you know, that was the, the, that was the first uh, time ever South Africa was awarded international conference. Yes. So we did it in Cape Town. Uh, at the, there on the waterfront in a hotel, uh, big distraction because uh, it was in the Table Bay, uh, there was a conference venue, uh, and, but the Table Bay never had enough uh, rooms for the workshops etc and so forth. So we went into the BMW the Pavilion. Now people have to walk from the Table Bay to the BMW Pavilion through the waterfront. So very few reach the other side sometimes, but uh, it was fun and uh, a great success. Uh, uh, just uh, the overseas people were so inspired and by South Africa and, uh, and of course the wine and the scenery, etc. and so forth. And all of them all, always wanted to come back. And uh, I was the president at that stage. And then it, the year after, I really went through the world, Norway and all these places. And then in 2009, uh, we put in a bit again, was, or 2008, and we were awarded the 2010 conference. Okay. And for my sins, I was president of LESI, of LES South Africa again, and the chair of the organizing committee, and we had it in Santon. And uh, again, hugely successful. You know, so uh, the incoming president in, 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 in 2021 asked me if I will arrange for her, her winter planning conference, which will be in the summer uh, in South Africa. Okay. And uh, I think that, will, that it will be the, the full circle. I started with a, with a planning session for leadership and I will end with a planning so session for leadership. Work. But how did you, how did you fall into Alice, Alias? How did you come across? Look, you know, it? it's funny, you know, interventions in, in my professional career. I mean, how did I end up in Adams and Adams? Uh, by accident. I, I met uh, uh, one evening at a, a social event of one of my friends, a guy called Jan Stein. Dr. Jan Stein turned out to be uh, one of the doyens of the South African IPC. 
and one of the senior partners in Adams and Adams. And uh, I was at that stage happily uh, a commercial lawyer in, a, in a, one of the big firms in Joburg. Uh, and uh, we chatted. And uh, he said to me, you, you know, come and work for me. Uh, you know, come to Adams and I laughed. <laughs> Why would I do that? So, yes, three months later I was with Adams and Adams. Doing intellectual property rather than no, commercial? No, or? interesting, interesting is that no, Adams and Adams at that stage was a, a firm that received 70% from its work from overseas, uh, the, the patents and the trademarks. Uh, and the, 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 the IP departments or the, the trademark department consisted of, 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 of Brendan Somerville, Brett Aldrich and Jasper Flock that was retiring uh, and one or two uh, associates. Howard Rogers was the whole maintenance department doing renewals and recordals. And litigation consisted of, 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 of Charles Stewart, Alan Smith, and, and Tony Seymour just joined. And, and later, a year or two later, media came. So that was, that was Adam's, Adam's trademarks. Uh, I think the whole partnership was 15 people, 15 partners. Uh, and, and my brief was, uh, we had these couple of South African clients. And, and we need some, you know, somebody to look after them and, and don't you look after them uh, because actually the overseas market is, yeah, and, 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 and uh, you, yeah, you, you go from there, you, 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 you work with the clients and, uh, but I was always, you know, and I mean, I look at these guys, uh, you know, the Jan Steins and the Brendan Somervilles and, and the Brett Aldridge's and you always had a sense of, you know, this sort of inferiority complex because I mean, if you look at Adams to Adams today, uh, you look at 500, uh, top, the, 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 the top Fortune 500 magazine, and it's 200 or more of those companies are clients of Adams and Adams. Mm -hmm. And my question always was, so what did I do to contribute to this? You know, it, it came from somewhere. And, 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 and it came from those guys that worked so well, I mean, and, 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 and had this vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, this leadership, as I say, it's, the leadership is, is a tactical discussion. They saw in what, where we want to go. And, 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 and Brendan and Brett said, look, we, look, we have these South African clients, it's not a hell of a lot, but we need somebody to look after them. So that was me. And, uh, and uh, I ended up with that. And uh, yeah, from there I went on. And then, of course, Brett, Brett Aldrich. Uh, as I mentioned, Elias is, is, is like 70% business and 30% yes. lawyer. And, and there was IMTA and LES and Brett said, well, the only place that you're going to meet business people is with LES. So I, I, I went to LES, I, I, I went with Alan Lewis, that was president later of LES International, uh, only South Af the only African ever uh, that, that achieved that. And, and, and I went to LES. And I and yes, that's what I did. I, I I made business people and do what my partners expect me to do. Which is a which is a I guess a lesson for young lawyers, associates, senior associates who are building a practice and, and think that everything is gonna just come to them and, and whatever. I guess being involved with different societies and, and organizations is it's vital, isn't it? It's hard work. Mm. Uh, you know, the thing is, it's always, uh, I always, you can only smile. If, you know, I, you know always, yeah, I don't have time. I'm, mm. I'm swamped, I, you know, under the work, etc. and so forth and so on. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a competitive environment out there. Uh, it's, it, they're not going to come to you. And, 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 I mean, we presented with this wonderful firm uh, that was given to us. 100, it's 110 years old, it was handed to us. And, uh, and my, my question always is, so what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you look at the client base, I think there's something like 28,000 clients here. And, and, and my, my question always, active clients, and I, my question always is, so what did you do? How many of those clients are actually yours? How many of them did you bring? Mm -hmm. Or are you just sitting back and Wait for the name Adams and Adams to carry you through life. Do you think that's something that that uh, that firms in general have forgotten to 
to teach the the younger uh, professionals coming in that mark they need to do their own sort of marketing and their own um, uh, you know, sales it, it, as it were to to be able to, to yeah. grow the their, their you know, practices. Uh, yes, yes and no. Uh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, uh, you will, and I mean, I have, we have it in Adam's Adams today. The person that wants to will, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get wonderful young professionals in Adams and Adams that they've done wonderfully well uh, developing, uh, uh, you know, things that, or, or uh, practice, practice areas that we didn't, we were not involved in earlier. And, and, and it, it's up to you. Um, I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's for you to see uh, what, you know, where in, in, in whichever field of law, be it, whether it's, it's IP or CPL or wherever, what are, what, we are, what are we not doing? And what are the other people doing? And, and how can I uh, develop that? And we have examples of, of young professionals that achieve just that. Yes. But uh, yes, I'm afraid, uh, you know, the thing is the, the, um, the landscape in law is going to change. I mean, if you get, come back to LESI again, and, and, and I mentioned leadership and, and, and looking forward, I mean, you know, um, I was chair there, uh, or, or I'm chair of, 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 uh, of the subcommittees of LESI. And uh, I mean, we worked on the uh, very uh, in the news in South Africa this stage, blank packaging and tobacco industry. We worked on that aspect of it uh, in the 2006 7 already. Uh, the, we presented to the European Commission and to the World Wealth Organization uh, the LAS's uh, points of view. On, on that, on, 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 on the, uh, well, you can call it misappropriation of intellectual property rights of IP owners. But, you know, the thing is, the thing about these organizations is you can't, cannot become involved in a political discussion. Uh, but I delivered a paper in Australia or New Zealand uh, numbers of years ago uh, where the, the other presenter was a guy, a professor from the Nash University, the advisor to the Australian government on, on blank packaging, because Australians were the first people into this. And, and, and at that stage it was clear that it was not so much a health issue than a political issue. It was, there was an election and, 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 and the, the Prime Minister wanted to, to, to get to the electorate and it was topical and, and you can beat up on the cigarette companies and and gain brownie points. But there were a lot of things in, in, in the whole process. I mean, for instance, bilateral trade agreements uh, signed by the Australian uh, President, uh, uh, Prime Minister, that was sort of just ignored. And, you know, so, uh, but we were involved in that. Uh, it, it resurfaced again about in 2014 in Belgium, where we chatted about it again. Uh, over the years, uh, the, the LSI organization was involved in a study about what's reasonable royalties. Uh, and this year, uh, we chatted about it now in San Diego. The, the publication will, it will be published, reasonable royalties for uh, the tech industries, uh, what's a reasonable royalty, for instance, for compute, computer chips. Uh, for certain motor, uh, motor spare parts, etc., and so forth. And uh, because, you know, we also, uh, in my committee, with some of the other technical guys, looked at 3D printing, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and, and where that's going to. Uh, the, the high tech guys looked at artificial intelligence and where that's going to. Because, uh, you know, sooner than later, uh, the face of law is going to change, mm. totally. Uh, it, uh, it's it's going to be, you know, uh, we came from, in the 1800s, from an individualized economy, you can call it. I mean, you, you had a farm and you plant millies and the, the excess you sold off or you made your own clothes because you needed it and so forth and so on. So you went into, to the, into, into, into the um, industrial revolution mm. where you have uh, mass production 
uh, uh, you know, the production lines, we all see the, you know, we know the, the story about the Ford production lines, etc. and so forth. But the thing is about uh, what's going to happen is if you look at 3D printing and artificial intelligence, we're going to move into a, a, a customized economy and, and to an economy of blueprints. And, and what does that mean? That means that uh, every household in the foreseeable future, gentlemen, can have a 3D printer. And, and what the commodities will be will be blueprints. And the blueprints will be licensed to people. You will go online, you, you, you license a blueprint to manufacture a cup that you can customize the way you want it, and, and, and then you're going to print it. But the fact of the matter is that there must be a license, and that part of the, of the, of the technology that you want to license must have a value, so you're going to look at valuations, and then you're going to look at licensing, and of course you have to play a royalty, and that's where you get in your, your reasonable, what's a reasonable royalty? But, but, but you know, and it's not only the legal field, I mean, the medical field, uh, the people in auditing, anything that is, can, be, can be defined as a, a commodity mm -hmm. is going to be done by a computer. So, you know, I already see it now. My clients uh, uh, more and more expect from you to be part of their management team. Uh, you, you need to know the balance sheet. Uh, you need to know what, where they're going to. And, and, and you need to be part of the strategic discussion. If they want to know uh, what the requirements for uh, a trademark is, they can get it on the internet. Yes. It's, it's not news. And, uh, and I mean, things like, you know, registering companies.